Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Friday, the 1st of October 2021. Today we're going to start off with the under 23 game that was played today. I told you all about it yesterday. Did any of you go? I did, and it was a pretty decent game, actually, pretty end to end. Um, some shocking misses from QPR, absolutely shocking. Um, and it was so. Uh, this is the match report from millfc.co.uk. Three goals and three points for under 23s. I'll take from SE 16. Mill under 23s defeated QPR 3 1 in the Professional Development League at the Denham Friday afternoon. Ben Thompson, John Daddy Bod Varson, and B Sart Lodge found the back of the net as Kevin Nugent's side kept up their 100% home record. Nugent was able to name the aforementioned two first team players in his starting 11 with Seb Drozd and Abdul Abdul Malik taking their places on the bench. It took just nine minutes for the Lions to take the lead as Thompson fronts an effort from the edge of the area into the roof of the net, giving Rangers goalkeeper Joe Walsh no chance. Jordan Gilmer, star in middle side, rushed out to thwart Sean Adakwa um, on 20 minutes before tipping a 25-yarder from Brandon Aviero wide two minutes later, but with 25 minutes on the clock, ours were level with uh, as OD Alpha Dispossessed Jaden Davis before firing home. Parity was restored for just seven minutes, however, as neat build up play between Sean O'Brien Thompson and Bob Varson led to the striker finishing a fine effort in off the far post to make it 2 1. Nana Boten could have made it 3 1 just seconds after the restart, but as he beat the, the goalkeeper, he was unable to get his shot away. There were just three minutes played in the second half when the third was scored, however, as a delightful O'Brien delivery was powered home at the back post by the head of Topolage. <laughs> Gilmore once again produced an outstanding save from Franklin Domi as the R's looked to get back in the game, but coupled with some wasteful shooting from the visitors, yes, Mill were able to see the game out of ease. Next up for Mill under 23s is a home game against Swansea City on Tuesday, the 19th of October. I think that's at the training ground. Maybe they might change it. It was a pretty good atmosphere there yesterday. Quite cold. It's getting cold now. And the team was Gilmore, Walker, Topolodge, Al Allen, Ockley, uh, Penny, Davis. Thompson, Bodvarsson, O'Brien, Boateng, and the subs uh, that came on were Briscoe for Allen, uh, Drozd for Boateng, uh, subs not used, Evans, Abdul Malik, and Smith. And yeah, I mean, my man in the match was Bodvarsson. Um, I thought, now the guy was putting in so much graft and effort in the first half, I thought they've, they they prearranged it there and we'll be, he'll be coming off at half time. But no, he played full 90 minutes, and he won untold amount of headers. It was like I was watching Matt Smith out there. Um, he was winning headers. Well, he's he's playing against kids. Uh, there was one tall centre back for QPR. I don't know if he was overage. Um, but yeah, they were they were kids. But he's winning headers. Um, not only up front, but in defence as well. Uh, he played really well with the ball at his feet as well. Um, yeah, uh, Ben Thompson, yeah, he scored a goal. Did okay. Um, quietly impressive Ockley in the defence. Um, it's kind of uh, Hutch vibes coming out from him. It's just pretty solid. Um, doesn't get flustered. Decent with the ball at his feet. It's it kind of impressive. Quietly impressive there. Jaden Davis, uh, I don't know if he's wearing new boots or whatever. He's just, he didn't have a... Maybe it was that the first time in front of home crowd in a long time. Had a bit of a nightmare. Uh, maybe playing in the position he's not too comfortable playing in, maybe. An outside left. Um, struggling to, to beat his man in the first half. Second half a lot better. First half, he did uh, give give the mistake away for the goal, but QPR, oh my god, they're bottom of the, they're bottom of the league. With, I think they've just got one point. Um, they've lost like this is like the third. They've lost like four now. They've drawn they draw a game on Tuesday against Watford, but um, they had point blank literally. Three yards out, the geezer had it cross come into him, and he's he's ballooned it over the bar. How the and he was one of the ones who was like yapping a lot. 
after that he just shut up because oh, how can you miss that how can you miss that shocking um and they had another one where they were through the number seven and he was just screaming about missing it just couldn't believe that he missed it um yeah and gilmore made a point blank save brilliant one and their keeper as well um who was it one of the defenders i think it might have been penny from a from a cross or a corner kind of chested the ball towards the goal and the keeper just smacked it smacked it away point blank like instinct reactive save it was a really good game end to end stuff um yeah, pretty decent game. Um, it's good to see two first teamers play and put in effort um, to uh, pay respects to the rest of the team uh, who are under 23s so, and put in the effort and play well and play well with the upper players. So that was good to see. Um, and John Daddy Budfossen did not cup his ear when he scored. And um, there wasn't any of that going on. So what did the manager make of that? So Nugent and London Derby success. Kevin Nugent was pleased with the first half in Mill under 23's 3-1 professional development league win over QPR on Friday afternoon but bemoaned aspects of the performance after the break. Ben Thompson, John Daddy, Bud Fast and Beast at the top of the were on target in the victory, but the third goal coming early on in the second half. The Lions were indebted to goalkeeper Jordan Gilmer and made a string of fine saves to keep Mill's lead. We're really pleased with the first half performance, especially after the Cardiff game in which we were all disappointed. The team, my staff and myself. Well, don't be too hard on yourself because they're, they're clearly the best team in the league because they've won five in a row, so chill out, mate. We bounced back today. The two goals in the first half from Tomo and John Daly were fantastic, but then we scored early in the second half and our mentality seemed to change a little bit. Although we're pleased with the win, it's not going to paper over the cracks of parts of the second half when QPR were maybe unfortunate to not get anything out of it at the end. Jordan made some fantastic saves. He kept us in the game early on against Cardiff too. We're pleased with his progress, but the rest of the team should be patting him on the back. They've got, uh, they've got to learn a bit about game management. We don't often play two games in a week. You can tell by the players' tiredness come the end of the game, but the reality is it's the first team experience. Okay. Um, yeah, but... QPR played two games. They played Tuesday as well, so uh, maybe you should utilise your squad a bit more, which you did when you bring in you brought in two first teamers who hadn't really been playing that much. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I, when you free one up, the other team is going to have to try harder to get into it. Before they were just passing it around. In the second half, they went direct. They brought on two pacey players and they were just bombing full uh, balls wired up front to them so they were trying harder so you're gonna have to defend more if the other team tries harder especially in the first half when they were just doing a little sideways passes and stuff like that but okay I'm moving on now to this uh, this is from millwc.co.uk and it's about the um, Millwall Community Trust October holiday camps, uh, half term coming up, Monday the 25th of October to Friday the 29th of October, um, and they've got these camps basically, basically, what, what would you call it, like babysitting but with sports, um, so instead of just, I don't know, you pay a £10 and they spend the day, well they spend the morning, 10 to 3, what's that, 5 hours? Just get them away from you for uh, a couple of days structured playing rather than them just playing down the park getting up to no good um, so five days there five to fifteen Mill Community Trust football and multi-sports holiday camps will be returning this October aligning to government guidelines on the return of grassroots oh so it's the first time they, they've been allowed to put back under new rules Oh, that's good. Uh, Sean Daly, CEO of the Trusted, we're excited to bring back our football and multi-sport camps to the young people in our local community. These camps will give children the opportunity to have fun playing football, tennis, dodgeball, and so much more while making new friends. 
Um, the trust will be hosting the camps at the following venues from 25th to the 29th of October. So here you go. So you got St Paul Sports Centre, sort of road. That's Fisher's ground, uh, or next to it, I think. I might be on the pitch. Um, and at Lewisham in the Lion Centre, but Bellina Road next to uh, the club shop. Yeah, ten to three, ten pound per day. Kids five to fifteen, and you got email that number if you want to book. Uh, email that email address if you want to book a place. So they, the ones it's been a while, but they they have been quite popular. They do sell out. So if you're interested in that, get involved. Um, moving on now to this interview from Alex Mitchell from the London News Online dot UK. So. I imagine this was in their paper today. I don't know. I haven't seen the paper uh, version yet. But on Friday, they do the do generally do these long form pieces that are quite interesting. And I thought this was quite interesting, so I'm going to bring it to you today. No hitch for Mitch. Mill defender has enjoyed dream start to Leighton Orient loan. Alex Mitchell's low move to Leighton Orient has gone off like a dream, and a highly rated Millwall centre back is confident he is yet to hit peak form. The 19 year old defender is yet to be on the losing side since joining the East London club at the end of August. Orient, bossed by former Lions chief Kenny Jacket, has won three of the five matches that Mitchell has played in, as well as keeping three clean sheets. Nice! When you add in his short stint with Bromley at the back end of last season, the Millwall prospect's record is just two defeats in 16 matches as a senior pro. Now that is impressive. Uh, being at Bromley last season was a big step up from the under-23s football, and with respect to them, going into the league is another step up, said Mitchell, who signed a long-term contract before his latest temporary exit from SC16. Mill have been really good with me in terms of the loans they've given me. They've sent me to the right places and the right people. Uh, not too far. Like Bromley's not that far, and Leighton Orient's not that far. I mean, it's across the river, but it really isn't that far. I feel like the environment I've been put into uh, is the reason why I've done well at this moment. Jacket had 307 matches as Mill manager, winning the League One playoffs in 2019 or 2010. He took the Orient job in May and brought along Joe Gallen, also his assistant when he was at the South London club. I got told quite late in the window that I was going to go out on loan, so before that I had just been concentrating on doing my doing my best at Millwall, said Mitchell. I know there were one or two clubs interested. Kenny Jacket had such a good reputation when he was at Millwall. Well, it's a no-brainer, really. Being in London as well, I'm loving every minute at Orient. Kenny has been fantastic. He's uh, really into small details on the training pitch. Him, uh, Joe Gallen and Matt Harold are really good. A lot of it is tactical. And I'm learning a lot. It's a privilege to do that. You're nervous going into a club, but Kenny and Joe made me feel really welcome. They told me just be a defender, that I'm there to win them games from the back, keep clean sheets. Joe said... Uh, the on-ball side will come with the confidence I get from defending. It will come naturally. That was the main message. Uh, Mitchell has been called a robot and meathead, but he takes both as a compliment. Murray Wallace got called a robot all the time at Millwall because he's such an athletic guy, said Mitchell. When we'll do one-on-one -on -one, uh, ones, it will be, oh, the two robots. It was a nickname that carried on to Orient, which is quite funny. I love it. Same with meathead. It's what it says on the tin. I had balls. As long as I'm scary to attackers, I don't mind at all. Uh, Windsor raised Mitchell had trials with the likes of Brentford, Reading and Wickham before he was picked up at youth levels by the Lions. He made his Millwall debut as an 18th, 80th minute substitute for Daniel Ballard in the EFL Cup victory over Cambridge in August. I haven't actually played that much over 90 minutes, he said. I'm only six games in, so I'm not feeling 100% and the full potential yet. But I feel I'm getting a consistency of being constantly good, trustworthy and reliable. As more games come, I'm hoping that will momentum will follow it. The O's are second in League 2 and look well placed to be in promotion mix. After Bromley were knocked out of the National League playoffs in May, it might be second time lucky for Mitchell to pick up silverware. That would be the dream, he said. Every day uh, we're in the gaffer, Joe and all the senior players have just one target to get promoted. So have the potential to do that would be once in a lifetime opportunity that we can't turn down. Uh, we're working so hard every single day, it's the only thing I'm looking at at this moment. Obviously I'm a middle player, but this season I'm, I'm wholeheartedly an Orient player. I'm grafting so that when we get to the end of the season and look back, that we're really happy with what we've done. Mill manager Gary Rowe admitted he agonised about keeping Mitchell in his first team squad, but eventually decided a great amount of game minutes slower down the football pyramid would aid his development best. The gaffer, uh, Adam Barrett and Paul Robinson got it spot on with me, said Mitchell. I was with the first team for two months straight. 
I feel not just mentally but physically that has improved me a tremendous amount because I work technically. I got more powerful and I learned little tips and tricks here and there like what Sean Hutchinson, Jake Cooper and Alex Pierce do off the bit do off the pitch. They are there I want to be. They are they are where I want to be. Rightly so I wasn't playing because we have such good quality at the club. It was the perfect time for me to go and play men's football for ninety minutes. Damn the that's the guy's got away with the words. So he's um, not. That's a good interview. That's uh, saying all the right things about all the right people, and it's got a, got a good attitude. That's that's what you need to make it in this game. You have got to have a good attitude. You got to be nice to people, and they'll be nice to your back. And if they're not, you you cut them out and you tell everyone, don't trust this guy because he's a fucking snake. But he's got he's uh, working with people. Helping them out, doing a lot, and I think he's got a really good chance of uh, getting. Now, you would want if you want to get silverware in that league, you've either got to win the league or you've got to win the playoffs. Um, the top three go up automatically, and then teams fourth to seventh compete in the playoffs. So. If he finishes second or third with Leighton Orient, he's not going to get a medal or anything. But he will say he can say that he got the team promoted. But what you really want is that number one spot. And I hope um, I hope Leighton Orient do it. I hope they um they hope they get up there. Um, the um so it's international week coming up. Um, so Mill haven't got a game. Um, I might have a look and see what Leighton Orient are doing. I might go and go and uh, go to one of their games. Why not? Um, okay, so moving on now to uh, Hutchinson. So I said the other day uh, in a video the other day, it's so good to have Hutchinson back. Um, it's just it just lifts everything at the back. And, it's, and then I said, well, you you can't point to one thing that he actually does. Well, you could, you probably could. I'm like, I'm not like a, a superstar coach football guy. But I don't, so I can't say technically what he does. But I said, whatever he does, it's just exudes confidence and leadership amongst everyone else. So it's like, oh, okay. But so Gary Rowett, um has come out maybe give a bit of a technical explanation on what Hutchinson actually brings to the Millwall team and I'm going to read it now, it's from LondonNewsOnline.co.uk it says Millwall man is key to pressing game and also playing a higher defensive line Millwall manager Garrett says his side are able to play a higher defensive line when Sean Hutchinson is in their side the former Fulham and Motherwell centre back has been out with a quad injury for more than a month but returned to the starting lineup for the 1-1 draw at Forest last weekend and Wednesday's 1-0 victory over Bristol City. He is a key player for us since we've come in the building, said Rowan. In a free, he always gives us that little bit of extra aggression and mobility in there. He's quite a quiet lad, but a leader in the way he plays. I've always felt since we switched him to the middle of the back three that he's been quite a crucial factor because he gives you extra speed to cover and you can go a little bit higher up the pitch and press higher. He gives you that safety valve. He is one that when he is missing he is a big miss because it takes something away from the team so there's something a bit technical that he's saying there which maybe I was trying to express but I didn't really know so because he's quite quick uh, probably in his head and on his feet like you saw that the other day with the head and Murray Wallace m m jumped up a bit early for him missed it and the guy was away in the clear and it would have been disastrous. Probably had a really good chance of scoring. Hutchinson was just bombing back. So I think he could, he kind of guessed that Murray Wallace might miss the header. So he was just boom. He was awake to the possibility. As soon as it was confirmed, he fucking bolted back to the goal line. He didn't run towards the player because why would you do that? You know where the player is going. The player is going to head towards the goal. So he runs straight to the what the goal um the goal line just to the right side of the post and by the time he's got there he's, he's 
close the guy down has the guy shooting and then him uh, he just put Mrs. Uh, Hutchinson and Beakowski saves it so he's closed down the angle there's, there's the guy can't cross it because Hutchinson is, is there and he'll block it he'll just hit Hutchinson he, like, he could, could get a corner but he got the corner from trying to take the shot which Beakowski had the, the, the tight angle covered anyway so um, there you go that's probably what I was trying to say in the other video but here we go Gary Rout explaining what what Hutchinson provides to the team and there it is um yeah and if you play a higher defensive line you can uh, have the midfielders go forward as well which means we can attack more and if we attack more we score more uh, so now we have a game tomorrow it is the last game before the international break and then we've got a game against Luton in two weeks time so let's have a look this is from 11v11.com it's the head to red record between Barnsley and Millwall the Millwall and Barnsley I've jigged it around so the Barnsley versus Millwall games are at the top because it is an away game and I cannot believe how really bad this is for us traveling to Barnsley has anyone traveled to Barnsley and seen us win um, I imagine like the people go home and away every year probably have but if you just pick random if you just randomly go to a Barnsley game you've probably seen some real stinkers here so obviously we lost last year 2-1 uh, well they absolutely obliterated us we I think we had we didn't have any strikers so this was one of the first times we played um, Mason Bennett and Murray Wallace up front um, yeah so we won in 2018 four in a row defeats not not many draws there just defeat 2012 we won so six six years between wins for Millwall and then between that one all you go back one two three four five games to 1994 when we won in the early 90s when we were actually good and that's when uh Teddy Sheridan was was around and we were just coming we just come down from the first division Premier League went as it was as it is now um, and we, we uh, we'd gone up there and got not been beaten four games in a row three wins and a draw but before that in the 1980s and 1979 five defeats in a row luckily to get two draws in the 60s one of them was a League Cup game and then four defeats in a row and then 1930 we won twice this has not been a good uh, trip for Millwall fans or Millwall teams over the years. But then you can conversely say the other fixture, uh, in, not in recent years, in recent years, Barnsley have actually um, beaten us quite quite often there since, since 1993. A lot of L's there, but before that, absolutely nothing in terms of Millwall, Millwall versus Barnsley at the den. So since we've moved to the new den, so something about the old ground, they, they really fucking upset them because they didn't do fucking jack shit there. Absolutely hated it there. Um, so they beat us in 1929, but all the way since from 1930 all the way to 1992, they didn't do fucking jack shit against us. And then since we moved to the new den, it's been a different story because... Uh, they they've won quite a few times here, probably more than we we've beaten them. Not too good. So let's go back up to Barnsley versus Millwall. Um. So yeah, over the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games at Barnsley, one win, one draw. And five defeats. Real. Um, so I said the other day at this game we should kind of be winning. Like, well, no, it isn't. I mean, they've got they've got something on us. They're like a a bogey team that no one really knows about. So, what does that mean for this? 
So we've got Pratton's predictions, skysports.com. What does he say? Where are we? Are we near the top? Oh, Stoke versus West Brom. He said it was going to be 2-3 to West Brom. And what was the actual score? Uh, no, it was 1-0 to Stoke. Oh, didn't get that right. Okay, so where are we? Are we at the bottom again? Uh, let's keep scrolling down until we find little old Millwall. Oh, Luton above us. Oh, right, here we are. Not right at the bottom. So he reckons it's going to be Barnsley 1, Millwall 2. Barnsley 1, Millwall 2. Okay, let's remember that. Now let's move on to whoscored.com. So they've got the team, but they get the team wrong all the time, so I'm not going to worry about that. Let's see what they say. Um, yeah, so they're saying we haven't got any injured players, but Malone's going to be injured, so they got that wrong. Match facts. Mill have drawn their last three away matches. There have been under two and a half goals scored in Mill's last five games in a championship. Oh, Barnsley have failed to win in their last eight matches. What does the prediction say? The prediction says Barnsley nil, Mill won. Yes, now we know how to win games. We've won one game after four draws in a row. We should do what we did against Bristol City and do it again. Uh, Corley Woodrow's 20th minute penalty gave Barnsley an early lead against Nottingham Forest. But Marcus Shopside capitulated in the final 30 minutes on their way to a 3-1 defeat. The hosts are winless in eight league games. Millwall and Bristol City looked evenly matched during their encounter in midweek. But the Lions eventually walked away with the three points after Jed Wallace converted from the penalty spot. Gary outside are now unbeaten in six league games. Aha, uh -huh. so we're unbeaten, but uh, only a little more draws. So, uh, match forecast. Uh, there will be a high number of cards shown. Millwall will make a comeback if they go behind. Barnsley will score from a direct free kick. Okay. Um, okay, so let's have a look at this. So, head to head, let's go with home v away, and there you can see it like we've seen it before. Four of the last six games were Barnsley wins, one was a draw, and one was a Mill win. Um, goals they've Eight goals for them, five for us. Seven cards apiece. And quite a few clean sheets there for both teams. Um, three, one to Barnsley, two, one to Barnsley, two, one to Barnsley. Okay, so let's scroll down and see the table. So here you can see Mill Barnsley have got a bit of the Mill Whites about them. They've got five draws from ten games. They love a draw. Um, they they don't score a lot of goals and they concede more than us. They got minus six goal difference. They are twenty one first in the league table. That's one place above the relegation uh, zone. Their fans are not happy. They really are not happy. Um, so if we can uh, frustrate them at early doors, maybe can uh, score an early goal, the fans might turn, and it it could be the first um, occasion this season where a man who gets fired after a defeat by Mere Wall. That would be good to see. I always like seeing that when a team lose to little old Mere Wall, uh, the chairman shit their pants and. Get really pissed off and fire their managers. It's really good to see. I love doing that. Uh, let's have a look at the form table. There you go. They haven't won in six games. We've won two times in six games. Um, yeah, they've only scored three goals. So you can imagine, you can you can realise why the the fans are not happy. Um, let's have a look now at so. 
Barnsley. There you go. This is them at home. Lost to Forest. So Barnsley scored the first goal at home to Forest. And even Forest beat them. And Forest won all that. So when we played them, Forest won all that. So in terms of my dad can beat up your dad, does that, that should mean we could beat Barnsley, you know? Even though the history says uh, we might struggle. They didn't score against Luton at home. They didn't score against Blackburn at home. Blackburn are really bad. They were bad when we played them. Um, Millwall. What have Millwall done on their way, well, away travels? So, draw, draw, draw. Lost Cardiff, draw. And all the way back, friendly win at Ipswich. So, not a lot of goals scored by Millwall. One goal. So if we're going to win this game, it seems we're going to have to win it 1-0. Because we only score 1 or 0. That, that is, uh, yeah. So it's either going to be... It's either going to be 1-0 to Millwall. Or 1-1. One, one, or maybe 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, let's have a look here. Um, keeping possession of the ball. Very weak for Barnsley. Hmm, okay. Let's get at them then, huh? High pressing game. Uh huh. Cool. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. So yeah, there you go. That's um, that's all of the preview stuff. So now I'm probably gonna have to stick my neck out and choose a score. What do I think it's gonna be tomorrow? Um. Uh, I would like to see us win. History says we might struggle. Barnsley are basically in the position that we were. And you, you, as a Mule fan, you knew how bad that felt. But we managed to grind it out against Bristol City. And they, the players stepped up. And they managed to um, do what they needed to do to win that game. Now, can Barnsley do that against us? They need the win as well. Can they do it? If they gonna do it, it's probably gonna be against us with their history against us. Um, but we're six games unbeaten, home and away, um, in the league. Not obviously, we lost to Cardiff and we lost to Leicester. Um, so. But you would like to think that we, we're not losing games. We're just struggling to win them. So what do I think the score is going to be? I think we've got players back now. Shea Yojo's back. Phoebe's back. Wallace is back. Hopefully he starts playing football and... I don't think he's going to get much out up Barnsley if he starts acting up like he did when he came on against Bristol City. Shouting at the ref and all that fucking jazz. Just play football, Jed. Just do, do what you need to do, mate. Um, if he if he tries all that at Barnsley, I, he's not going to get anything. So he needs to actually play. we got McNamara back. He was good going forward. So... I think a clean sheet is a possibility, although we might concede. And if we do concede, it'd probably only be one. Can we score two goals now we've got more attacking players out, um, with us? And what will the team be? Because the players put a lot of effort in on that game on Tuesday. We, we know Malone's going to be out tomorrow. Wallace will have to play. Probably on the left, uh, left uh, wing-back role. Um... Will any other changes come in? Will Kifton Bell come in? Will George Evans? Will any other players be changed around? Um, obviously Matt Smith started. And you would imagine that Jed Wallace will take his place in the team. Starting the lineup. Um, Can we score the two goals? Or will it only be one? I'm going to say that we will. I think we will. Now, well, now we're back. I think... I think we could win this 2-0. I 
I think it might be 2 0 win to Millwall. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to say that. I think it's going to be a 2 0 win, win to Millwall. So before I finish the video, I just want to remind you that um, London Marathon this Sunday, Millwall fans, 22 of them running for various charities. Um, here you go. I'm not going to read them all out now. I'm just going to scroll down slowly. Um, if you want to donate, just come to this page and click on the link. Um, I put the link in yesterday's video, which was titled Post Match Stats for. Oh, I forgot the title of it. It's the one for the 30th of September, so just go to that video. Uh, if you want to support a charity, and you can do it via these. Uh, runners and help them out make them feel good about uh, raising money for charity if you want to donate anyway or if just one cancer catches your, catch your eye uh, you have a good win on the horses or on the on betting you want to chuck some money at them there you go um yeah that's it so that's it for the video thank you all for watching goodbye